Hi everyone, this is Cody, and in this video I'm going to be showing you the Mead ETX-70 uh, telescope, computerized telescope, along with the uh, Mead AutoStar uh, 4, 497 controller. Uh, now these two didn't originally come together, uh, but the 497 controller does work with this, and it offers quite a bit more than the standard controller. And since this one didn't, I didn't actually get it, I got it used and it didn't have a controller, I figured I'd get the best one I could get for it. Okay, so taking a closer look at the telescope itself. Uh, so up here we've got the lens. Um, it's the one I've got in it, in it right now is a um, is a Mead. Uh, it's a nine millimeter. Uh, this lens is pretty good for just general use. Um, the lens that came with it, uh, which is this, is pretty high quality. Originally, I think it would have come with like a twenty three millimeter. I think, as well as this one, um, and then. This one, it is a refractor telescope, although it kind of is different because of the rear end. Uh, so you've got your lens, but then it's also got this. So you can unscrew this, this kind of uh, adapter-ish piece here. Um, and then flip the mirror. There's actually a mirror. Let me see if I can tilt this up. There's a mirror inside of there, uh, which reflects the light up to the eyepiece. So if you tilt that down, then it basically turns into a huge telephoto lens. Uh, so you can buy adapters, I think, that you can mount like a camera back here. And then you can uh, do astrophotography, which is pretty cool. And I may do that eventually. I don't know if there's actually, like, how to find the adapter for the ETX-70. I'll have to have to find one of them. Because um, I've seen one for, like, the 90. Uh, but I'm I'm assuming there is one since it has this port back here um, And then You've also got the focus knob here. I'll just lock this back in uh, Which works very well. You just turn it so since it's computerized you can unlock these which allow the telescope to move freely uh, so you can manually move it, but obviously it works much better with the computer um, so you can lock that in and then there's also a lock down here, so uh, you can also lock that in for the base so the base can't turn. And this this is on a stand. I just have it off the stand for the video. Okay, so uh, I've got this set so it's level. Um, and then it's also, um, this is locked into position. Uh, so it's ready so we can turn it on now. Uh, it just takes like six double A's, I think. And I've got the controller plugged in. So I'll turn on. And I've already set this controller up with the the correct telescope and everything else so it's going to power off up i've disabled the warning so you don't have to see the sun warning so it is uh the 27th um so hit enter um daylight savings time's not on so i'll hit the time or get the time so 12 27 and then enter uh, so then for it kind of dims the display here So probably the best thing to do is easy alignment Although you do have to be careful with this so you would point the telescope um, north as well as level um, so I think um, Obviously, we're not going to be looking at stars inside, but I think that's about north uh, so we'll just hit enter and now it's going to try and find a um, an alignment star uh, so as you can see it's finding the star so it's going to find it uh, supposedly and then we have to make sure it's found it and then make a few adjustments from there if necessary so you can use these arrow keys to adjust and then you can also press the numbers down here uh, to change the speed that you adjust at Okay, so after it made that noise, that means it's ready for us to look into it. Uh, so you can look into there and make sure it's lined up. Uh, for me, at least, you do want to make sure you point it uh, pretty close to north when you do your original lineup. Uh, to find Polaris, point it, point it at it, and you should be good. Uh, but you probably will have to make some adjustments to center, center these in the eyepiece. So once you got it centered, you just hit enter again, and it will find a second al alignment star. And then uh, you can do the same there. Uh, and then after that, it'll be aligned and it's ready for use.
So there we go, uh, that should be aligned. Then you obviously make your adjustments to center in the eyepiece, press enter, and everything will be set up. So now uh, let's take a closer look at all the menus. Okay, so I've uh, turned off the studio lights for this. So you should be able to see the screen a little better since it is dim, uh, it's made so it doesn't hurt your night vision. Uh, so the first handy tip with the 497 controller, it has a little LED on the front. So if you press zero, you can see a little light there. Uh, it brings up a red light. So if you want to look at a star map, uh, this can be pretty useful. Um, but you should probably have a red flashlight anyway, but it's a nice feature. Um, so here's the main menu. So mode is basically a back button. Uh, enter is obviously an enter button. Uh, so select an item so you can select all, lots of different items, objects, events, guided tour. Uh, so this can do a guided tour of just basically what's in the sky. Um, and then there's also utilities. So in here is actually where you set up the telescope. So, um, under, so you can, you can set basically everything here, uh, battery alarm. Uh, you can have an alarm when the battery's running out. Uh, you can turn off, off and on the beep, uh, the contrast adjustment. I actually had to adjust the contrast on this screen to make it look good as well as brightness. Um, there's all sorts of different options. And then you can also, underneath setup, here we go, you can align it, you can set the date, the time, uh, daylight savings time. Uh, you actually select the telescope. Do you want to make sure you have your telescope selected? Um, and then you can select, you can select lots of different stuff here and basically set it up. Even somewhere in there, you can actually enter your address and your phone number. Uh, so if you ever lose it, someone could hopefully return it. But let's say we want to look at an object. Uh, now, I think this can find around 12,000 different objects. Uh, so if you go into sol solar system, Mercury, um, Venus, and it, can, it can find all the different planets. Um, and so that's pretty simple. So you can, uh, let's say you want to look at some deep sky uh, named objects. Um, what could we see? There's lots of different op options here on what you can look at. Um, it is amazing how much it knows. Uh, you have to make sure you get the alignment right, though. Otherwise, you're going to be looking at nothing. <laughs> uh, I can find galaxies, nebulas. Um, and there's just, there's a lot of different, um, different stuff it can find, and it's pretty cool. Uh, so star clusters, um, you can see the Pleiades, um, now let's say uh, we want to go to one, so you press enter on it, now if you just want to look at the info about it, you can, uh, oh and I don't know if I ever mentioned it, these are the kind of like the scroll keys, um, so if you want to, hold on, So we pressed on it, now you can scroll down, um, you can find out what it is, um, where it is, um, and everything, its magnitude, uh, and then its size, it rises at 4.14 uh, p.m., and then it uh, sets at 7.09 a.m., uh, you, can, you can find out pretty much everything about everything in here, <laughs> so it is kind of pretty cool. Um, all that features now obviously in some ways it's not good it's not so good so you don't memorize where everything is but I also see it as useful for um, for a beginner who wants to get into it but uh, doesn't want to uh, memorize everything off the top of their head uh, straight away but this actually does help you learn what where stuff is because you uh, uh, you'll look through it with this and this is a small telescope if you have a a bigger telescope then you may want to look at it with it uh, so for me at least I, I like it. it helps me learn uh, quite a bit about uh, where the stuff is in the sky it can even find black holes although I don't think you'll be seeing any with this telescope um, so overall it can find a lot uh, so let's say you found something hold on it's not gonna be able to find that right now um, So let's say we want to look 
completed these, so we can click enter uh, and then press go to. Now if you press go to, um, well, it's going to tell us that it's, uh, hold on, what am I doing? So we can press, uh, I think I might have entered the time wrong, <laughs> because it is after uh, 4.14 p.m. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. So that should, that should be able to find that. I'm pretty sure I entered the time wrong. So anyway, you can see, uh, you can find most stuff. So overall, I think this is a pretty good setup. If you run across a, a Mead ETX 70 uh, for not too much money, I'd recommend getting it. Um, and then the controller, I was able to find this one used. So basically this is a used setup. Um, and then it, it, can find, it can find a lot of stuff, especially with that controller. Uh, now it is relatively small and it's a refractor, so it does definitely have its limitations. Uh, it's not like a eight inch reflector or anything like that, but it is pretty useful. The main, I think, feature that most people will find with it is its size. Uh, the, the tripod for it weighs basically nothing. And then this doesn't weigh that much and it's really small. So you can, uh, you could take this on a hiking trip. You could take it, uh, you can take it in the car really easily. You can take it basically wherever. Uh, so for its size and hopefully not much money if you get a good deal on it, I would definitely recommend it. So that's it for now. I'll see you all in the next video.